um, there are things that I've attempted to do that um, people have been guarding that development to kind of monitor that development, and I feel like I am almost held hostage to their opinion of how I'm doing. And so I've taken the, the, the I've made the decision lately to keep it to myself. Whether it comes to fruition or not, I know. And I don't have to worry about what do you think of what I've done or not done. Because I felt like a lot of times I would do things and automatically I would think, well, let me call somebody and talk about what I'm doing. That has been like a shackle. So to get to the point of self-mastery, to use that word, um, self-appreciation, um, um, self-respect, I, I can figure it out. I have the tools to figure it out. I don't need you to help guide me. And I know sometimes we need people as a sounding board, but there was something beyond that that I received. And to get to a place where I'm like, I'm good. I'll figure it out and I'm whatever, fall, rise, whatever, I'll be okay. That's been freedom for me. So when, um, when I think about freedom, I think that we have like personal freedom. I think that's what a lot of us are talking about. And then I think about, um, I, I, I'm like a we person, you know, so I think about freedom for us in the sense of, um, of those of us. So it's, I'm like, I feel like it's not enough just for me to be free. I, I would be, um, because at the end of the day, in my mind, it's usually like lonely. So if I got all this personal freedom and I can, like I, I feel like I operate, I, I talk about like my world, right? I operate in a world that I feel like I created. So I want to be around certain people and these are the people, but in my world, I want my people to be free too. So like if I want to get up and go do something, I want my people to go get up and do it too. And so for me, I'm always um, interested in how do we, I'm not, I'm not so much, um, I'm more interested in, and I'm not saying everybody, I, I'm not, I don't know if I can speak for all of black people when I'm saying, but, but I'm saying in the world that I operate in, I'm saying like, you know, this little Hartford, whatever world that I operate in, I just feel like it, it, it would be so much um, more interesting if, if everybody could find their freedom that they're looking for. And so, and, and have the, um, the knowledge or the, the, yeah, I guess it's the, the knowledge to be able to realize that they do have that potential inside of them and can, can do it because um, every, I, I, I get consumed sometimes with, you know, so you do see the stuff on television, you know, uh, another young brother gets shot. And so in some ways in my mind, I say, well, that could not be me. But on the other side of my mind, I'm saying that could be me just like, so as, as free as I am, as educated as I am, as all of these things that I'm supposed to be, a police officer could shoot me today, just like one of these young brothers that live right, right in this neighborhood. And so, and that's not supposed to happen because I'm free. And so I feel like until we get to the place where it's, um, it's the it's it's a different sameness, a different sameness in like that because because I feel like you know um, we get caught up with um, wanting wanting to have a consequence. So something bad happens, and now we want a consequence for that bad thing for the person that did something bad. But I feel like I'm not satisfied. Like it, I, I'm not I don't feel good about the idea that as much as we just talked about freedom and. I'm not speaking for anybody else, but even because I agree with everything y'all said in my mind, but I'm saying, but it could all be like, boom, done, just like that. And for me, so that, that's, that's unacceptable for me when I think about freedom. Going back down. Michael, you can just say before I hand it to you that freedom for me is really not being defined or confined by the system and also reaching out to free others. So I definitely agree with that as well because until we're all free, none of us are free because they look at us all as the same. Thank you. Um, as I was listening to 
your comment. Um, I've been really intrigued about what I call the, the spirit of Harriet Tubman. Mm. And what? Say that again. I've been really intrigued about what I call the spirit of Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. Oh, the spirit of Harriet Tubman. And once she became free, she went back to free other slaves. But she herself had to know the blueprint, the path, the way to, to freedom. And from my understanding and, and reading her story, she had a team of people who were all on the same frequency and vibration for that mission to be carried out. And so there's a law that sometimes we want more for others than they want for themselves. And so that we sometimes can have a glitch in the system because I don't know how true it is. I just heard this part of the story that if Harriet Tubman had you on that path and you made noise or something that would give everyone else away, I don't know how true it is, but I was just told she would shoot you on sight. Yeah. Because now the we is compromised. And so when we're, when we're talking about freedom, we is a great concept and idea, but you can't save people who don't want to be saved. And so we have to also play, keep that into consideration as, as well. Um, so the spirit of Harriet Tubman, I, I like to use as a guide because she, she of all people definitely wanted freedom for, for all people. And even in her journey and her time, it, it didn't always work out that way. And, and that is true. There are some people that don't want to be saved, but for me, just even planting the seed could be enough. Um, I believe that freedom as well is um, stop comparing ourselves to white people or um, in alignment with what they think or what they feel about who we are and what we should be and, you know, these things. And for me, because I think it is kind of like hard for us sometimes to know what our culture is because we were born here in America. Um, and you know, we look at other uh, people that are black from other places and we're like, wow, they have their own foods, they have their own this, they have their own that, their own language, and uh, all of these things. But you know, I, I, I really believe that once we stop allowing for white people to dictate who we are and we begin to develop that for ourselves separate from what their ideas are, um, that will be in a much better place. And I, um, like the gentleman down at the end, you were talking about Martin Luther King, and I truly believe that um, a lot of our downfall as a people came during the civil rights era when we were um, trying to be um, included in what white people were doing and um, their education. So now we see our children being miseducated and we're upset about it. And um, so I, I really believe that, like I said, we need to take a step back. And I mean, I'm grateful for Kwanzaa you know, but at the same time, I think it's greater than that. I think it's, it's bigger than that. And I think we do need to learn how to build outside of what are the confines that white people have created for us, the, the paradigm for which we see ourselves in others. I can uh, slightly piggyback on what you said because I agree with what you said, but I kind of, have had the thought that maybe Martin Luther King's drive to have us free might have been a slight portion of our downfall because it didn't come with a, a rule book. We all had an idea of what we were wanting to be free of. We wanted equal opportunity, we wanted equal housing, equal this, equal that, equal that. And everything that we wanted to equal of was pretty much in that white community. And we didn't think that we were uh, fairly being issued our freedoms. 
So as we had the opportunity to have some of those and take advantage of it, we didn't really take advantage of it.